Welcome back. Kelly Shaw joins me now, clinical psychologist with the uh, Department of Corrections. And today we're just going to be talking about what we're all feeling at the moment. Kelly, welcome to Good Living. Thank you. Happy birthday too. Oh, thanks, Megan. <laughs> Thank you for having me on your birthday today. Uh, now, just quickly, of course, in the news, it's been um, well publicised that our prisoners are being relocated. That's pretty much all happened now, has it, or still a bit to go? I think it's still in process at the moment. Um, prisoners from Christchurch Men's Prison and Christchurch Women's Prison, uh, just for safety reasons around low pressure water at the prison. Mm. And to make sure that um, all damage has been accounted for okay. within those prisons here. Great. Now, Kelly, we're going to be talking about how everyone's feeling at the moment because, really, until you've been through something traumatic like this, you've got no idea how you're going to respond, do you? Absolutely. So what are some of the normal things, <laughs> and I say normal, <laughs> yeah. that, that we are experiencing at the moment to kind well, of alleviate us? There's a wide range of normal at the moment, Megan. Um, people will be feeling a, a huge number of things. There'll be a lot of people feeling quite distressed, quite anxious. Um, there'll be people feeling angry and irritable. A lot of people have been experiencing some physical symptoms, feeling quite nauseous and headachey because um, of all the adrenaline rushing around in our bodies at the moment. Um, you know, people will be feeling quite um, hopeless and depressed possibly. You know, a lot of people have experienced significant losses during this time. So yeah, a, a really wide range of things would fall under normal mm. um, at the moment. Things, uh, memory loss. Absolutely, <laughs> difficulty. <laughs> there we go, memory loss. Can't remember <laughs> what I'm going to talk about. Um, difficulty concentrating. Um, you know, you're talking about that on the baking segment. You know, not a good time to learn a new skill. Mm. Um, give yourself a bit of a break. It will be. It will be hard to think as straight as you might have at a at a more normal time. And so this is really just due, as you said, the adrenaline is surging through our bodies. Yeah. And, and I guess we're trying in our own mind to find a way of how we cope because we haven't been through this. A absolutely, just like when you you know physically hurt yourself in some way, your body works to repair the damage. Um, all the emotions that people are feeling at the moment is their brain's way of making sense of what's just happened. Um, and you know, so it is a perfectly normal responses to be having um, at this particular time. So our brain is now trying to um, put us on the right step to absolutely to get make to make sense of what's happened, and also it's keeping us a bit alert. You know, for after shocks in case anything else happens um, you know your body's primed to react in a way that's going to keep you safe so these those both of those things happening at once now sleep deprivation I know that that is huge for so many yep. of us at the moment yeah how long can we expect that to continue for? Well, hopefully over the next few days and weeks as um, you know the aftershocks subside and people start getting back into a much more normal routine, um, people will start returning to work, they'll start leaving their houses and not be so isolated. Um, we can hope to see you know some sense of normality returning and that will help with things like your sleep, um, with those emotions subsiding and starting to peter off. So how long do we kind of give it before we start thinking, actually I'm not getting better? Well really, you know, we wouldn't be putting any kind of um, label on any what anyone's feeling at the moment for probably a matter of, of weeks really. Mm. If you find that you know as time goes by uh, over the next weeks and you know into say a month, couple of months and you're still experiencing difficulties with your sleep, you're still experiencing difficulties with your mood state, um, you're feeling very vulnerable, you, you're wanting to isolate, you're fearful of places to go to, um, you're having nightmares, those kinds of things and it's really Really impacting on your normal functioning, what you used to do and how you mm. used to live your life, um, then that's really the time to start talking to your health professionals. And, and start taking those steps. Yeah. Speaking about talking, I know we, we're all talking about it. Some people are like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah, that's but, normal too. <laughs> but is talking about it still good as well? So it completely depends on your personality. Well, you know, debriefing used to be a really big thing in, in dealing with um, trauma and responses to trauma, but that doesn't work for everybody. You know, we're all unique. Some people are um, finding they're coping really well by sharing the emotion of what's happened to them and talking about how they felt and you know how prepared or not prepared they felt other people really do need to just get on and do something practical instead that's helping them feel safer and connected to people so be guided by naturally what you're absolutely telling you to do yeah now children I know that they are quite resilient but they are feeling it yeah. at the moment aren't they because absolutely this is completely new for them yeah and as you say you know children are very resilient but they will take a real cue from you as the parents and I know it's really hard you know this is new to all of us you know mostly um, and it is something that's very anxiety provoking but as a parent if you can hold it together um, and and to present you know as calm a front as you can for your children it will really help with their experience of things 
And, you know, we are human. If we have a frightened response to an aftershock and our children are there and see that, you know, regroup with them, give them a cuddle, take the time to say, oh, you know, that was a that was a bit of a scary one for mummy, you know, but we're OK. We all did what we were supposed to do. We all, you know, stopped and dropped and held and, and mm. did what we've planned to do as a family and then move on. Lots of reassurance. Absolutely. And I know lots of children, you know, because they're so visual and they like to paint and draw and do all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. and so a lot of that experience is coming out on paper, which is yep. good too. Yep, absolutely. Children will continue, you know, even a child that you think has been relatively unaffected by things, you may find that their school drawing and things over the next few weeks is quite dominated by themes that are consistent with the earthquake. And that's just them processing for themselves what's happened and making sense of their world um, that they live in. And, you know, and nothing to be alarmed about about, um, unless there's a lot of other things going along with it too. If you're finding your children are tearful, frightened, um, you know, they have regressed a bit, maybe they're bed wetting again, those sorts of mm. things, and that goes on for some time after normal life has started to return, then again, talk to your health professionals about that and, and talk to their teachers at school so they know that your child, you know, has been quite affected by what's going yeah, on. Yeah, so everyone is yeah. aware. Yeah. Survivor guilt's quite a big thing as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is at the moment. A number of people have been talking about that. That. those of us whose, whose homes were less affected, mm. whose businesses were less affected, um, you know, can feel significantly bad about the fact that things are relatively normal for us. Um, and I think if you're feeling that way, recognise that that is actually a normal thing that happens for a lot of people. It's part of the picture of what we're all feeling at the moment. And if there's something that you can do, you know, as an individual or as a family to reach out to somebody who isn't as well off or isn't coping as well as you are, um, who's lost their home or their, their livelihood, you know, do something for them. Find a practical way to express your gratitude for actually not having been so badly off and you may find that that will assist with dampening down those feelings of, oh, you yeah. know, I shouldn't be as okay as I am. Good, good mm. advice there because I know that is a very big thing as you say at the moment. Yeah. So that's really good. So put that into some practical steps as well. Absolutely. Well, Kelly, thank you so much. It's been lovely to break that down. No and problem. to just kind of reassure everyone that all of these things that we're going through no are what everybody else is going through as well. So that's great. We're, we're all losing our mind, but that's fine. We're <laughs> on the same boat. Absolutely. Thank you, Kelly, and a big happy birthday to you. Enjoy your day today. Yep.